The other day, when I went to the clinic to pick up some medicine, the doctor asked me a few questions. What grade I was in, if I felt much pressure, how well my grades were, when my exams were, which school I was planning to apply to. After all that, he meaningfully said, it's normal for a girl your age to feel stressed. Try not to overthink things. Taking some supplemental pills can help. For over a month, Jian Xing has taken these pills. The effects weren't very noticeable, but it might just be a placebo effect. Her sleep, however, has improved a bit. However, she's also been dreaming a lot more than before. The first Monday of April, Qingming Festival, a day suitable for burial, tomb sweeping, blessings and worship. During the day, Jian Xing, Jian Yu and Lu Cheng went back to their hometown together. This was Jian Xing's first visit here since her grandmother passed away. The village was bustling, as everyone was carrying joss papers and yellow sheets. Jian Xing, squatting before her grandmother's small grave mound, struggled to accept that her grandmother was lying inside. After all, Jian Yu was her mother. While they stood there, Jian Yu shed tears, wishing she could burn all the money for her mother. The wind tilted the burning money, ashes mingling with the earth, as though they had accepted each other. That night, she went back to school to study. It had been raining all the way. The rainfall was deep and uninterrupted, droplets falling like ropes. The world was hazy, obscuring the identities of passersby. Jian Xing huddled under her umbrella, its brim slightly lowered, obscuring part of her view. She walked all the way into school, but not to the classroom buildings she went to the Xinhua bookstore. This was where Chen Yanbei had left something for her. During Qingming Festival, nobody was busier than Chen Yanbei. On the first day of the holiday, he had arranged to meet Jian Xing, but Jian Yu stayed at home that day. Chen Yanbei had originally planned to leave the thing at Ai Kiki, but Peng Bin had also closed his shop to go back to his home. At the end, he could only choose to leave it at Xinhua Bookstore following Kin Jiming's suggestion. At five in the afternoon, there was still some time before night study. Perhaps due to the rainy weather, there were not many people in the store. Jian Xing took down her umbrella at the entrance, stepped on the mat a few times to dry her shoes, and then walked in. There was no one at the counter. After Jian Xing looked around without seeing Zhang Bishan and other staff members, she went browsing among the shelves. In the end, she lingered in the area of foreign novels. On the right-hand side of the third shelf, there were a few copies of The Kite Runner. Jian Xing picked up each one and flipped through them, till she found the one Zhu Zheng King had read. It had been a long time since he read it, and the first page was now covered with many new inscriptions. Jian Xing touched the central area of the page with her fingertips, before returning the book back to where it had been after a short while. Next to it was a book with a dark cover titled The Moon and Sixpence. Jian Xing suddenly remembered a username that Zhu Zheng King had once used. She opened the book, and indeed on the first page was written the line, for the man who is blessed with a magnificent dream, even a handful of coppers could buy the world, a chance encounter could be like the vast sea. Apparently what he wanted to see was the moon. Jian Xing held the spine of the book tightly for a while, then took down the copy of the kite runner next to it. There were people talking softly about any Baobei nearby. After wandering around for a while, Jian Xing realized that this was an author. Most of her book titles were very artistic, her writings mostly linguistic, so Jian Xing casually flipped through one. Suddenly, she heard Zhang Bishan commenting behind her. You can always read these in college. Jian Xing was so startled by his voice that she jumped. Hearing Zhang Bishan's triumphant laugh, she turned around to look at him, somewhat speechless. She only noticed after turning around that Zhang Bishan had cut his hair. Although it was still a bit long compared to students, it looked much more formal. He was dressed in a white coarse knit sweater with his arms crossed against the bookshelf. To be honest, his face was somewhat pleasing to the eyes. You're so timid, Zhang Bishan straightened up and walked towards the counter, speaking as he walked. Your friend, however, seems very brave. Jian Xing followed him to the counter and filled out a book loan form before replying, Thank you for your help, I will take the stuff now. Zhang Bishan nodded and said, I wouldn't recommend it right now. It's a bit heavy, you can pick it up when you are back from school. What is it? Jian Xing casually asked. Zhang Bishan responded, I didn't look inside, do you want me to check? Jian Xing was unsure where his familiarity was coming from and said, No need, I will come pick it up after school. Zhang Bishan just laughed and didn't say anything else, just nodded. After Jian Xin left, Zhang Bai Shen turned to look at a bag on the ground. 
The opening of the bag was open, and he could see a Japanese labeled sleep aid eye mask in the top packaging box. He stared at it for a few moments, then emotionlessly kicked it, causing the bag to instantly tip over. Ah, it accidentally fell over, he said, bending down to pick up the items scattered on the ground, stuffing them back into the bag. Each time he put something back, he took a glance, noticing that all the items were sleep aids. The kid was suffering from severe insomnia at a very young age. He packed everything back in and caught sight of a note on the ground, written on it. There are winds on cloudy days, stars on sunny days. She embraces you in the wind, she watches over you from the sky. I'm here in the world. English class was assigned for evening self-study session. The teacher reminded everyone to pay more attention to their composition writing. Jian Shin took the opportunity to pull out the kite runner. Only after she finished reading, she realized that this book was about friendship, with the focal points being betrayal and redemption. That line for you a thousand times over was not describing love. Jian Shin glanced silently at the blue moon by her side, secretly hoping that the moon in sixpence was also not about love. After school, Jian Shin went to the bookstore to get some items. When she got home, she found that they were some sleep aid eye masks, earplugs, and some tea for drinking. She blushed, placing the sticky note in her drawer. Bamboo, did you get these from some old recipe you found? She texted. White smoke, nonsense, this is a very famous secret recipe from our local Chinese medicine practitioner, secret recipe. Jian Shin laughed and replied, okay, thank you. White smoke, don't mention it. I won't be back for the Labor Day, see you during the summer vacation. Jian Shin agreed. On Wednesday night, Jian Shin went to the bookstore to return the book. Zhang Bai Shen was playing on his game console. Seeing the book in her hand, he was taken aback and said, Do you not have classes every day or do you not sleep every night? Jian Shin casually replied, I read during break times. Zhang Bai Shen gave an O and continued gaming. A moment later, he looked up again and asked, Aren't you in the bridge class? Does the bridge class allow reading outside books during breaks? Jian Shin answered in a perfunctory tone, Yes. She showed no expression on her face, but Zhang Bai Shen could still notice her impatience. He raised his eyebrows, put down his game console, and said with a laugh, Even a word is not allowed, quite a temper. Jian Shin didn't respond. Zhang Bai Shen glanced at the color underneath Jian Shin's eyes, put his smile away, returned to his game, then said, You should take insomnia seriously. Sometimes it might not be as simple as it seems on the surface. Jian Shin's movement of filling out the form paused for a moment, and when she closed the book, she responded with a light hum. The April rain had been dragging on for a month, the temperature rose in May, and the willow catkins were everywhere. As soon as the willow catkins finished, the new batch of third-year high school students said goodbye. Summer was coming. The countdown at the entrance of the school had already reached six, scrolling next to it was a line of words, the sea is boundless as it becomes the shore, on a mountain's pinnacle, I am the peak. When the countdown reached four, the entire third year high school was given time off, and the school suddenly felt half empty. During physical education, Jian Shin and Lin Jia sat under the shade of a tree to rest. She saw the congratulatory banners still hanging on the school field. They were the only ones who could see it now. Ah, that's nice. They've finished their exams and are leaving. I can go home and cool down in air conditioning. Lin Jia, who was naturally more heat intolerant than most people, had started wearing short sleeves as soon as June arrived. During classes, she had almost always kept a small fan in her hand. Jian Shin handed her a cold bottle of mineral water, and Lin Jia held it against her face. After a while, her face turned red and Jian Shin laughed. Don't keep it on, give it a break. Lin Jia sighed, I feel so hot that I don't feel like eating. You should eat a little bit at least, Jian Shin advised. Remembering something, Lin Jia turned to look at Jian Shin. Jian Shin handed her a puzzled look. Lin Jia looked her up and down and said, Jian Shin, do you lose weight in the summer or is it due to recent stress? What's wrong? Jian Shin asked. I feel like you have lost a lot more weight than you were in winter. Jian Shin said, really? Maybe it's because the clothes are thinner now, so it seems like I have lost weight. No, you really have lost a lot of weight. Lan Yu, who was sitting beside, suddenly said. Jian Shin was taken aback and turned to look at Lan Yu. Meeting Jian Shin's gaze, Lan Yu nodded emphasizing, Really, you have lost a lot of weight. Lin Jia chimed, Right, I thought so too. It feels like your face is much smaller. Lan Yu nodded, In the past, when I looked at her from my angle, 
Her jawline wasn't as clear as now, but I think she looked better before, she's a bit too thin now. Lan Yu then turned to Jian Xin and asked, Jian Xin, are you dieting? Jian Xin shook her head and said, No, maybe it's because of the hot weather. After giving a few OS, Lan Yu said, Then you should be careful. Being too thin isn't good. Really, I have a friend who has always been very thin. She learns dancing and often feels dizzy when dancing. It's extreme. Lin Jia asked, You're talking about Shin Mo, right? Yeah, and she still controls her diet, I just can't understand, Lan Yu said. Ah, uh, I won't be able to control my diet in this life, Lin Jia said, lying on her legs. Jian Shin patted her on the back and fanned her with a piece of paper. In a little while, the sports committee called for gathering and everyone began moving towards the meeting point. Jian Shin dragged the half-dead Lin Jia, feeling a bit amused. As she raised her eyes, Lan Yu suddenly ran past her, calling out Chen Boyu's name as she ran. It had gotten hot, and everyone was reluctant to wear school uniforms, especially during physical education class, more people wore casual clothes. When Lan Yu in her white lace top ran past her, Jian Shin suddenly remembered, she had seen Lan Yu, next to the internet. In the park, two girls were chatting as they walked into a clothing store. One of them was Lan Yu. She said, so, should I call you sister-in-law Zhu? Under the scorching sun, the white figures in front of her were overlapping, and Jian Shin felt a sudden heaviness in her head. The Lin Jia in her hand suddenly became very heavy. She lost her balance and let go of Lin Jia and squatted down. There was a buzzing sound in her ears, and she couldn't see anything in front of her eyes. It felt like the nerves in her brain were being compressed. With frequent stinging pain, her limbs felt completely drained. Jian Xin, Lin Jia was scared and crouched down and called out. Her voice attracted others. Everyone was concerned and crowded around, the airflow seemed like it was pressing on her all at once. Jian Xin felt like she could hardly breathe. She took a deep breath, wanting to say, can you not all crowd here? She didn't need these concerns, she would feel so tired but she couldn't open her mouth and couldn't lift her head. At this moment, faintly, Jian Shin heard Zhu Zhenqing's voice. She heard him say, Everyone, let's step back a bit, let the air circulate, don't block it here. He could always handle everything properly. She didn't like him for no reason. Then Jian Shin felt herself being lifted up, in the wind, she smelt a faint fragrance of detergent. Zhu Zhenqing seemed to be calling her name by her ear, his voice was very low, unlike the others who were shouting. His voice was like the wind. Jian Shin gradually regained consciousness. She slowly opened her eyes. In the blur, she saw a white shirt by her side. Quietly, she held the hem of his t-shirt tightly. Let's assume she was still not fully conscious. That day didn't go smoothly as expected. Jian Shin later sat on the nearby steps, her head lowered, her ponytail hanging down to the side of her face, blocking Zhu Zhenqing's view. It also served as a veil for her sense of guilt and deception. The sun had heated up her head and the back of her neck. She felt her heartbeat gradually stabilize and then slowly straightened up to thank Zhu Zhenqing. Unfortunately, the sun was so bright that when she turned her head, the light hit her directly in the eyes and she couldn't open them, so she squinted. She couldn't see Zhu Zhenqing's face clearly, and Zhu Zhenqing may have thought her expression was ugly. In fact, within this period of infatuation that belonged only to her, Jian Shin rarely regretted anything because she knew this was just a fleeting moment in her youth. Maybe someday in the future, she would be able to effortlessly summarize it with the two words never mind. But the sunlight that day did become the beginning of her regret for that summer. The college entrance examination was held on the 7th and 8th, so because of our school being used as an examination site, students were given two days off. At 9 o'clock in the morning, Jian Shin sat at her desk at home and opened N Chinese test paper. At half past eleven, the alarm on her phone went off and she collected the test paper. She turned her head to find that Lu Cheng and Jian Ru had returned home at some point. Jian Ru was in the courtyard, squatting down playing with something. Jian Shin glanced at the corner of the table where her phone lay, and her mind blanked for a moment. Then, Jian Ru shouted, The phone is ringing. See what's going on? Jian Shin stiffened in her chair. When she reacted and picked up her phone, she intended to put it in her pocket, but hesitated and decided to put it in the drawer. She opened the drawer halfway and then thought it wasn't a good idea. Like a headless fly, she bumped around everywhere. In the confusion, Jian Shin stood up and accidentally knocked over her chair. The loud sound in the room seemed to strike her nerves. 
She looked at the fallen chair, gripping her phone tightly. Jian Shin knew better than anyone else that there was no completely safe place in this room, but she had to leave this phone. By any means necessary. Just then, Lu Cheng spoke up, it's nothing, just an alarm, it's off now. Jian Shin's gaze was still on the fallen chair. Her hand was so stiff from gripping the phone it was almost numb. Every inch of her skin was so tight it hurt, but she couldn't relax. The door was knocked by Lu Cheng. What fell? Did you injure yourself? Jian Shin slowly looked up. She could almost see Lu Cheng's careful movements and expressions through the door. At that moment, Jian Shin suddenly had a bold idea deep in her heart. Jian Ru was right. She wasn't any obedient child. Her rebelliousness was in her bones. In the yard, Jian Ru yelled again, You're grown now? What did you clumsily break again? Just let it be if you're going to be so silly. Jian Xing was still staring at the chair. A few seconds later, she put her foot under the fallen chair and said expressionlessly, It's fine. The chair just fell. La Cheng hurriedly asked, Did it hit you? Jian Xing said, It's fine. Not serious. Upon hearing this, La Cheng didn't continue to ask unnecessarily. Instead, he directly pushed the door and went inside. He saw the fallen chair on the ground at first glance and without a second thought, he walked over to lift it up. Seeing Jian Xing's foot, he frowned and asked, Are you sure you're all right? As he asked, he looked up, his eyes landed on the mobile phone in Jian Xing's hand, and he was stunned. Jian Xing didn't move. She dropped her gaze, looking at Le Cheng staring at her phone. After a while, Le Cheng moved his eyes away. He acted as if he had seen nothing lifted the chair and while moving it back to its original place, he advised without casting a glance at Jian Xing, be careful next time. With that he turned to leave, but Jian Xing stubbornly wanted a definite answer. She wanted to know if Le Cheng was really going to stand by her side. She didn't want Le Cheng to shirk all responsibility just by pretending to be ignorant. She didn't want Le Cheng to deal with her like how he dealt with Jian Ru. She called out to him, Dad. Silence. There was silence for a few seconds. Your grandmother asked you to keep it, so you keep it, he said. Then Le Cheng opened the door and left. Jian Xing was left standing in one spot. Grandma. When did she know that she has a mobile? Outside the door, Le Cheng didn't immediately turn to go to the kitchen to continue cooking, but instead he turned to look at the Buddha enshrined in the main room. The white porcelain statue with black eyes and red lips, the brows and eyes were all kindness. It is said that the kindness of Buddha can save all sentient beings, but it is a pity that grudges are hard to reconcile and intentions are difficult to achieve. The hardships of the world are not something that gods can interfere with. The college entrance examination is only two days away. Three years have passed so quickly, when you look back, it seems that there is only the smell of ink in your nostrils. As soon as high school senior year ended, high school junior year naturally inherited the title of the graduating class. Jian Xing became an old timer in this school. In late June, the college entrance examination score line was announced. The threshold score for the humanities was 573, for science it was 562, Beijing Aeronautics and Astronautics University was 660, and Nanjing Aeronautics and Astronautics University was 649. In the last examination, only fewer than 10 people in the transitional class scored over 660 and Jian Xing ranked 20th in the grade with 648. In theory, the scores of the ordinary exams should not be compared with the college entrance examination. After all, they are only first-year high school students, but everyone has a gauge in their hearts. The weight of the standard does not depend on the grade level. All right, you've seen the score lines that should be seen, and the score lines of various universities that should be out are all out. Joki stood on the podium and said, You're all grown-ups, you should understand what I'm saying without me having to say it, Chen Boyu. What are you laughing at? How many points can you score? With your results, dreaming of getting into Central South University is more realistic. I oh, didn't I just not do well in the last exam? You've been holding it against me for a whole semester, Chen Boy retorted. Joki said, I wish I could hold it against you for a lifetime. That's fine, let you hold it against me. Chen Boy laughed it off. Joki pointed at him as a warning across the air, then called out the name of Zhu Zhenqing. Zhu Zhenqing, hold on. Zhu Zhenqing answered with an AI. Afterward, Joki didn't say much. After all, they still had two years left to study, it was a bit early to talk about it. But everyone was interested in each other's highest aspirations for their college and university entrance. Lin Jia, whose goal had always been to head south for her future studies, curiously asked Jian Xin, what major are you thinking of? 
I've never heard you mention it. Jian Shin smiled, and after a while, she said somewhat unnaturally, I might choose Chinese language and literature. Eh? You're in the science stream and you want to choose this. Lin Jia was shocked. Jian Shin had a look of helplessness, or maybe I'll choose media production or journalism. They're all humanities. Why didn't you choose humanities in the first place? Lin Jia asked. Jian Shin leaned on the railing of the corridor, staring at the clustering clouds in the distance. They looked like the white quilts that you'd find in a hospital. I wasn't exactly sure before, Jian Shin said. I recently found that I'm quite interested in these areas. That's not bad, actually, Lin Jia said. If you look closely, you do have the temperament of these professions you always seem mysterious. Hey, do you like reading? Jian Shin used to have no opportunities. It was only after. But Jian Shin still nodded. I quite like it. Then I'll give you a book list next time. All are highly recommended good books, Lin Jia said. Whose is it? Jian Shin asked curiously. Lin Jia said the monitors. Jian Shin was startled. Who? Zhu Zhang King, Lin Jia said. He really likes reading. You know that teacher Zhu is his uncle, right? He grew up mingling in Hijong. He basically read all the books in teacher Zhu's office and in middle school, he could bring out two classic books at every reading meeting. Anyway, they all seem very advanced. Jian Shin thought about what Lin Jia had just said, hesitated, and asked, Are you going to ask Zhu Zheng King for it? No way, Lin Jia said, even if you ask him, he won't be able to answer. Don't worry about it, I'll be able to get it for you. Since Lin Jia said not to worry, Jian Shin didn't. Mainly because she really didn't know where to start with the whole situation. After a weekend, Lin Jia suddenly presented Jian Shin with a book list. There were dozens of books on the list, a few of which Jian Shin seemed to remember by title. She had seen them in the Shin Hua bookstore. Jian Shin casually asked, So many, who did you ask them from? He he, one of my junior high school classmates. Her older sister is a grade higher than us, she studies script writing. Last semester, before the art college entrance examination, her older sister asked her for Zhu Zheng King's book list. You mentioned it last time and I suddenly remembered it, Lin Jia revealed. Jian Xin said, Oh, thank you so much, Lin Jia. You're welcome, take your time to read them, Lin Jia said. Jian Xin nodded. Maybe because the book list did not come directly from Zhu Zheng King, Jian Xin did not feel much pressure when she received it, and she didn't feel too guilty about her frequent trips to the Xinhua bookstore either. At the beginning of July, the final exam for the first high school year arrived as scheduled. Two and a half days later, the exam was over and the summer vacation officially began. Chen Yanbei had been on vacation for half a month in advance. She was working as a sales assistant in a boutique shop on Renmin Road. She was working overtime shifts. Jian Xin occasionally went out to have dinner with Chen Yanbei when Jian Ru and La Viqing were not at home, and then quietly returned home. In mid-July, the final exam results were released, and everyone picked up a stack of summer homework from the school along with their report cards. Lin Jia was sighing all the way, I surrender, I might as well not be on vacation. I was planning to go out and play next month, it seems I will have to bring my homework. Jian Xin said, it's alright, you can play during the day and write at night. Lin Jia leaned on the table and sighed, Jian Xin, you're really patient. Jian Xin laughed and patted her back. Today's purpose was to pick up a report card and homework, after which everyone could leave. While others rushed home, Jian Xin strayed into the bookstore. She wasn't sure if the bookstore was open at this time, she just wanted to go and check. As expected, it wasn't open. Jian Xin could only turn back and head home. It's not that she had to borrow books here, it's that the books here could note down random thoughts they could. Leave traces next to Zhu Zhen King's handwriting. She couldn't think aside from doing this. How else could she have contact with Zhu Zheng King? When Jian Xing returned home, Jian Ru and Lu Cheng hadn't gone out yet. Since the weather got hotter, they only went out in the evening. Jian Xing went back to his room first. Not long after, Jian Ru came over to ask for his report card and nodded in satisfied after viewing it. Then play for two more days. You'll start tutoring next Monday. I've paid for you. It's at the west gate of your school. Jian Xing pursed his lips and sat quietly at the desk. Jian Ru asked, Did you hear me? Jian Xing remained silent. Sensing Jian Ru's growing anger, Jian Xing lowered his head and thought, Just let it out. Might as well have a fight. It's not like we haven't had one before. But just as she was pondering on how to talk back, 
Jian Ru suddenly reached out a hand and ripped open the curtains. There, in the socket behind the curtain, a charger was plugged in. Before Jian Xing could react, Jian Ru roared in fury, What is this? Why is there a charger in your room? Jian Xing opened his mouth but couldn't explain immediately. Not hearing an answer, Jian Ru tugged at Jian Xing. As he turned around, his cold gaze fell on Jian Ru, turning into outright contempt. Jian Xing, what's going on with you? What's been wrong with you this year? Jian Ru shouted. Lu Cheng was drawn in by the commotion and asked hurriedly, What's going on? Furiously, Jian Ru tossed the charger on the floor. Look at this. Lu Cheng glanced at the charger, then at Jian Xing. After a few seconds, he said, I bought this. Jian Ru was stunned. What? Lu Cheng explained, you mentioned a while ago your charger was faulty, right? I bought a new one. I was testing whether it's the plug or the wire at fault this morning and forgot to take it back, he elaborated flawlessly. Except the charger had been thrown to the ground and ruined. Having nowhere to channel her anger, Jian Ru angrily reprimanded Lu Cheng. You can't even remember such small tasks. What do you do all day? Why waste money on this when you could have bought a universal charger? It was a sweltering summer day. Driven to the brink by Jian Ru's incessant nagging, Jian Xing was increasingly fed up. Her temples hurt as if fire was boiling out of them. Just as she was about to respond, in a place where Jian Ru couldn't see, Lu Cheng gestured a small shake of the head. He had been scolded half his life and was used to it, there was no need for her to stand up for him. The room quieted down. The charger's track on the floor was seen clearly. Jian Xing looked at the deep and shallow lines, then quietly took out her phone to send a text to her tutor. This number had been memorized long ago. Two of the three rooms in the apartment have been merged with the living room, and the remaining one has been converted into a simple office. The desk is basic not even as wide as those used by students outside. Zhang Bai Shen lounges on a recliner with his feet crossed atop the table. A book lies over his face. It's hard to tell whether he's sleeping or not. His phone on the table keeps receiving messages, buzzing occasionally a setting he enabled out of malice. His damaged phone can't be silenced. Only when the door swings open does Zhang Bai Shen point at his phone, his voice emanating from underneath the book, hurry up and calm it down. Yi He Tang, fatigued, perches on a chair nearby and kicks Zhang Bai Shen. You're supposed to be helping, are you planning to sleep till nightfall? Zhang Bai Shen rotates his hand pointing at the phone towards Yi He Tang, palm up payday. Yi He Tang exclaims, get lost. The phone continues buzzing. Peeling the book from his face, he turns to Yi He Tang, Principal Yi, how about changing to a better phone? At least it should have a mute function, right? My dad handed it over to me. Yi He Tang picks up the phone to glance at the missed calls and unread messages and grumbles. Where did all these parents pick up this bad habit? They even try to bribe tutors at a cram school. Isn't that flattering you? Zhang Bai Shen puts down his legs, but his posture remains lax, as if he's boneless. Yi He Tang replies to a few messages nonchalantly. When a call comes in, he sighs, answers it, and hangs up after being dismissed. Frustrated, he flings the phone onto the table. The phone slides over to Zhang Bai Shen. He lowers his head to glance at the phone as a new message pops up. The message is marked with a name and the intention is clear and concise. Zhang Bai Shen raises an eyebrow turns to Yi He Tang and says, Principal, someone wants to drop out. Yi He Tang, who was about to doze off, re-energizes at this news, who? Zhang Bai Shen replies, Jian Xing. How do you know? Yi He Tang reaches for his phone. Zhang Bai Shen says, the text message says so. Yi He Tang checks his phone, oh her. Yi He Tang is surprised that he can remember Jian Xing among the nearly 200 students attending his cram school. It's truly a surprise to Zhang Bai Shen. Zhang Bai Shen casually asks, How come? When I was advertising at No. To middle school, her parents were selling snacks at the school gate. They only looked at the division school and never came here before registering their child. I asked out of curiosity about her recent test score, you know what it is? Yi He Tang asks. Zhang Bai Shen guesses, 6 for 8. Yi He Tang is surprised, wow. Are you guessing or calculating? Zhang Bai Shen looks inscrutable while laughing. Yi He Tang knows he's bluffing, rolls his eyes, and continues speaking. I thought, why would a student with such grades even need tutoring? She could easily apply for a teaching position, but money given straight away should not be refused. Such students won't tarnish our school's reputation. 
If they become top scholars, it will be a great advertisement. It benefits us no matter how you look at it. Indeed, but the top student isn't pleased, says Zhang Baishen. If she's not willing, so be it, Yi He Tang replies. I'm afraid I can't afford to serve such an important person either. So, you'll agree to let her resign? asked Zhang Baishen. What else can I do? Isn't the money given by the parents? Zhang Baishen teased. Yi He Tang understood and said, Oh, are you afraid she took the tuition fee and sneaked off to have fun? That's unlikely. She's a high school student, a younger sister, and she scores so well. Zhang Baishen smirked. It's up to you. Yi He Tang hesitated with his phone in hand, then reconsidered, better call her in for a chat in the afternoon. If anything happens, I have to take the blame. Well said, you're very conscious, Zhang Baishen started to stand, as if he was about to leave. Going? Questioned Yi He Tang. Unless you really intend for me to stay and work here? Zhang Baishen asked. Why not? You're from a prestigious school, and I'm focusing the advertisement on reputable schools. Moreover, you have a family business. Maybe you could help me find a job in the hospital in the future, Yi He Tang put forth. Does being a dropout count? Zhang Baishen joked. Yi He Tang's expression changed slightly. You're on a year off, aren't you? When are you going back? I don't know, it depends on when the old man gives the word, Zhang Baishen responded. I estimate I'll have to go back in September. Okay, you can rest for another two months. I won't hinder your last holiday, Yi He Tang said. The next time we meet, should I call you Master Zhang? You can call me Daddy. Get lost. Zhang Baishen laughed, and as he passed Yi He Tang, he patted his shoulder, I'm leaving. Come and hang out this afternoon if you're free, called out Yi He Tang casually. Zhang Baishen cast a glance at his phone and said, You said it's the last two months. Shouldn't I cherish the time I get to spend with the Sea of Knowledge? He was just messing around. Yi He Tang waved him off impatiently, bidding him to leave. Jian Xing knew she had to visit the cram school at least once since she had to get the tuition back. Just after PM, Jian Ru and Lu Cheng left the house. Before leaving, Jian Xing sent a text to Chen Yanbai, checking if she was working. Chen Yanbai said she had a couple of days off and was back home dealing with some things. Jian Xing didn't ask what these things were and went to the cram school alone. However, she hadn't expected to encounter Zhu Lu there. Zhu Lu was standing with a man, hunched and not very clean. He was holding a plastic bag containing money. Jian Xing only glanced at them once before redirecting her gaze. She figured Zhu Lu probably didn't want to see her and thought of leaving first. But the teacher who was collecting money saw her. Thinking she was there to sign up, the teacher promptly called out, Hey, student! Zhu Lu and the man turned their heads naturally. Jian Xing paused and met Zhu Lu's gaze. Zhu Lu looked strikingly stiff and quickly teared up. Jian Xing sighed internally, sidestepping Zhu Lu's gaze first. She smiled at the teacher, saying, I'm here to see the person in charge. The teacher, puzzled, asked, Who are you? Jian Xing, she said, I sent a text message in the morning. Oh, then you can go upstairs. Fourth floor, there's a small room. That's the office, the teacher said. Jian Xing agreed. She didn't speak to Zhu Lu, just walked past her to the residential building next door. The staircase was narrow, and the handrails were covered in dust. It's likely not a residential building and is probably rented out to students or short-term residents. The door on the fourth floor was open. The space inside was large because of the integrated rooms, causing an echo that made each footstep distinct. The sounds echoed Jian Xing's nervous emotions that she tried to hide. She knew that today was just the beginning, and the real source of her nervousness was in the days to come. But she couldn't stop herself anymore. After a few steps towards the office door, Jian Xing took a deep breath and knocked lightly. From inside came, who is it? Jian Xing said, it's me, Jian Xing. Oh, 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 the door quickly opened, and a very young boy came out. He was only in his twenties, seemed like a recent university graduate. He glanced at Jian Xing and said, Come in first. Jian Xing nodded. I am the person in charge, Yi He Tang, said Yi He Tang. It is written on the flyer. Jian Xing nodded. She remembered his number from the flyer. Do you want to drop the class? Yi He Tang asked, Do your parents know? Jian Xing nodded. The phone is theirs. At these words, Yi He Tang didn't ask further, but just arranged for the money to be refunded to Jian Xing. 
Jian Xing took the money and went downstairs, not expecting that Zulu hadn't left. The person who had helped her pay the fees has already left. Jian Xing glanced at her and stopped in her tracks. After making eye contact with Jian Xing for several seconds, Zulu finally came forward with her lips pressed tightly together. Are you also here for tutoring? Jian Xing shook her head. Zulu seemed to let out a sigh of relief and didn't say anything more before she turned and left. Jian Xing watched her back and for a moment seemed to see herself from the previous year. That night, she bumped into Jian Ru and Levi Cheng at the school gate because of a book, and then they pretended to be strangers. It seemed like even the dignity she possessed was stolen. Jian Xing stepped out without an umbrella, thinking that the setting sun wouldn't be so intense, but she still ended up sweaty after just a few steps. Her sleep quality was still poor. Not long after stepping under the scorching sun, she could see spots of darkness in her line of vision and some nerves in her brain were throbbing with pain. She was fully aware of the state of her body, so she entered the campus from the west gate. The campus was open during the holidays, but you needed to show your student card to the security personnel to get in and out. Jian Xing originally just wanted to walk around the pavilion, but she saw the door to the bookstore was open as she passed by. She paused. When she confirmed that the door was indeed open, Jian Xing walked in without any hesitation. Even though the campus was open during the holiday, there weren't many people in the bookstore. When Jian Xing walked in, she only saw a man named Zhang by Shen Haf laying in front of the counter. He had headphones in his ears and seemed to be watching television. When he noticed someone came in, he glanced over indifferently and continued watching his television. Didn't he find it strange that someone was visiting at this time? Jian Xing found this strange but didn't show it on her face. She directly went to the nearby bookshelves. Jian Xing found a book according to the list she remembered. It was a Japanese suspense thriller novel. The cover was pure black, and the X in the title was highlighted in red, resembling two intersecting knives. On the first page, amongst all the books Jian Xing had read, this was the only one where the entire first page was filled with the author's name. There were Chinese and Japanese versions. In this moment, what caught Jian Xing's attention was not the connection between this book and Zhu Zhenqing, but the book itself. There weren't many proper places to sit in the bookstore. In the beginning, Jian Xing was standing, but she leaned against the bookshelf when she got tired and eventually ended up quietly squatting on the ground. The plot unraveled bit by bit and Jian Xing also got more and more into the story, until she was completely immersed in it. When she read the line for noble things, being able to touch the edge is already happiness, Jian Xing paused. For a moment, she felt like she saw her own reflection in the main character. And when she read If You're Not Happy, Everything I've Done Is In Vain, she finally understood. It wasn't that she was similar to the main character, but that all secret admirations were like this. So careful, and yet so painstaking. These actions had nothing to do with adulthood, because heartbeats were a pure feeling that couldn't be controlled. She thought of Zhu Zhenqing, and of the conversation she had with Lin Jia, Jian Xing, would you be willing to wait for someone who doesn't like you? She was willing. She is not afraid to wait, because the one she is waiting for is him. So even the process and time of waiting become precious. I could be your faithful servant for all your life. Jian Xing wrote this sentence in the afterword of the book, then gently closed it and put it back in its original place. At the counter, Zhang Bishan was getting drowsy. One of his earbuds had fallen out. In the quiet, Jian Xing could hear the song singing. All the warm air in my arms turns into the wind, yet it dare not meet you. My worries evaporate into clouds. Then fall as rain, but still do not dare wet you. Jian Xing paused for a moment. At that moment, Zhang Bishan shifted his sleeping posture and abruptly came to his senses. He rubbed his eyes fuzzily after opening them and saw Jian Xing finished reading. Jian Xing responded with a startled them. Both earbuds had fallen out. The song was still playing. Thank God I do not live in your eyes, so I can keep your silhouette in sight. Oh, I'm so damn tired. Zhang Bishan sat up straight. The earbud fell to the ground with a pop. He picked up his phone, turned off the music and stood up. There was a cracking sound as he twisted his neck. Seeing that Jian Xing was still standing at the counter, he asked in a puzzled tone, What? Anything wrong? Jian Xing hesitated for a moment before asking, That song just now, what is it? Zhang Bishan, still in a daze, looked at his phone. Jian Xing wasn't sure whether she was mistaken or not, but it almost seemed as if Zhang Bishan paused for a moment, his relaxed, lazy expression slightly fading. 
but soon he resumed his nonchalant look and said, Oh, it's Silhouette by Yoga Lin. Jian Xing responded with a quiet oh, then in an attempt to cover up her intentions, added, It's pretty good. Zhang Bishan didn't say anything, just wore a smile that Jian Xing couldn't decipher. It was getting too late. Although Jian Ru and Lu Cheng hadn't returned home yet, she couldn't delay any longer. Before leaving, Jian Xing turned around and asked, Um, is this store open every day? Stretching his arms languidly, Zhang Bishan replied, Yeah, it is. What time does it open? Jian Xing asked. Jian Xing saw him hesitate and noticed the tiny furrow in his brow. A few seconds later, he said, about the same time as usual. Jian Xing murmured an oh, and then turned to leave. Not long after she had left, Zhang Bishan stared at the closed glass door for a while before clicking his tongue lightly and muttered, so rude didn't even say goodbye. After his complaint, he couldn't help but stretch again. He'd been laying down all afternoon, and his old back was about to break. As he turned to leave the counter, he tripped on the earbud wires. While picking up the fallen earbuds, he thought of the song earlier, and his eyes darkened. Jian Xing had barely opened her eyes when she heard someone pushing the door open. Stop sleeping, it's already late. Did you forget about your tuition today? Jian Ru, pulling back the curtains, instantly lit up the room. Almost immediately, Jian Xing began to have a headache. She endured it, sat up from the bed, and said, I know. During mealtime, Jian Ru said, Call home after school is over. Jian Xing replied, I know. Upon seeing her expressionless face, Jian Ru felt upset, Don't pull a long face every day. Offering you tuition is for your good. In such hot weather, where else can you go if not for tuition? Can you go out and play? Where can you play without money? Jian Xing quickly finished eating, interrupted Jian Ru and said, I know I'm leaving. Jian Ru slammed her chopsticks down in anger. Just as she was about to burst, Lu Cheng chimed in just in time, enough. Not skipping a beat, Jian Ru redirected her anger, enough. What's enough? I can tell she's up to no good again. Who knows where she got these bad habits from every day? Always up to no good. Lu Cheng couldn't bear it anymore, got up with his bowl and headed to the kitchen. Jian Ru cursed out loud, You father and daughter are the same. Are you guys planning a rebellion? Inside the kitchen, Jian Xing washed her bowl and offered to take Lu Cheng's, but he dodged and said, I can handle it, you just get ready and go. Jian Xing looked at Lu Cheng, wanting to tell him that she didn't go to tuition, but afraid that Jian Ru would say he was covering up for her, she thought it better keep quiet about it. Then I'm going? She asked. Lu Cheng nodded and said, Take it slow on the way. Although she had asked about the opening hours of Jiangbi Shindu bookstore before, she was not sure what time exactly. After all, for the past few days, she had only been to the bookstore in the afternoon. She left quite early today, it wasn't even 9 in the morning and the sun was already scorching, with her face turning red after only a few steps outside. To avoid sunlight, Jian Xing didn't take the Renmin Road but turned to Jinghu Road from the Grand Theater and then entered from the south gate of the mall, cutting through small lanes to Fuxing Road. A lot of people passing through the school at this time appeared to be going for tuition. On the way, Jian Xing even ran into a few of her middle school classmates. What a coincidence, are you also going for tuition? No way, leave some breathing room for us. Jian Xing smiled and said, No, that's good, you scared me, this person casually said, I heard you're in the same class as Zulu. Jian Xing was a little puzzled as to how she knew, but she still told the truth, we are separated now. Oh oh oh, a classmate of mine who was also Zulu's middle school classmate said that she met Zulu on the street once, and Zulu dragged her on to brag for a long time about being your deskmate. As she was saying this, a girl from the side joined the conversation, he he, that's me. Jian Xing nodded her head and flashed a smile as a greeting. Hey? Jian Xing, what's your relationship with Zulu like? Zulu's middle school classmate asked. Jian Xing didn't really know how to describe it. She hesitated slightly, but didn't expect the other party to immediately understand, I see, I see. That's the way she is. She doesn't last long with anyone. In middle school, she looked down on everyone because of her good grades. She made it out like she didn't know she had spent four years in middle school. Jian Xing really didn't know about this, she asked. Is Zulu repeating the year? No, she studied in her hometown during the first two years of middle school. Transferred in year two, her foundation was poor, so she repeated year two. Jian Xing originally wanted to say she didn't know about this, but vaguely remembered something. It was a long time ago, 
Zulu was worried about the exam, and she casually said once isn't your foundation really good. Zulu didn't look very good at the time, she thought Zulu was nervous, now she thought about it, it should be that sentence that made her uncomfortable. Jian Xing lowered her eyes and didn't say anything further. After parting ways, Jian Xing went to the bookstore. To Jian Xing's surprise, the bookstore was open so early. Zhang Bishan didn't look as downcast as he had the previous days but appeared rather energetic. He was squatting at the door, playing with a cat. Jian Xing approached, and he glanced up at her. Instead of asking why she was early, he engaged in light chatter. Have you eaten yet? I have, Jian Xing politely reciprocated. What about you? Zhang Bishan said, I had late night snacks. Jian Xing was a bit surprised, so you didn't sleep. Zhang Bishan replied, What time is it now? As an unemployed bum, I'm living on American time. No wonder he seemed more spirited in the morning than in the afternoon. Jian Xing responded with an O. Oh. T.S. Zhang Bishan gave her a look. In response, Jian Xing looked back at him, her expression querying, What's going on? Zhang Bishan stood up, stretched lazily, and randomly said, Never mind, consider it as my act of charity. Jian Xing had a vague feeling that he was hinting at something but couldn't exactly figure out what it was. Without any intention of elaborating, Zhang Bishan turned around and left. Before leaving, he added, Help me keep an eye on the store, yeah? Jian Xing awkwardly responded with another O. Oh. Jian Xing's time at the bookstore was now not only spent on reading. She had come across a set of trial papers that Kin Jiming had left here before, and she decided to do those while she was there. It wasn't long before Zhang Bishan came back, bringing two bottles of water with him. He came over and placed one bottle on the table. Before Jian Xing could say anything, he turned and walked back to the counter. Jian Xing glanced at him, didn't say anything, but also didn't drink the water. At noon, Jian Xing went home for lunch. Jian Ru didn't give her a friendly face, which gave Jian Xing a headache, so she didn't say much. After lunch, Lu Cheng suggested she sleep for a while. Jian Xing tossed and turned in bed and finally picked up her phone from her grandmother's room before going out in the afternoon. When she got to the bookstore, Zhang Bishan was sound asleep. He didn't wake up until around 3 or 4 in the afternoon. The moment he opened his eyes, he headed to the bathroom. After coming out, he sat directly across from Jian Xing. Jian Xing was working on a physics problem and glanced at him when he arrived. Zhang Bishan was drinking water with a grimace on his face as if in pain. Unable to help herself, Jian Xing asked, What's wrong with you? I'm sleepy, came his still hoarse reply. Jian Xing hesitated, then asked, Don't you have time off work? Zhang Bishan gave her a glance. Does a shop owner need a specific work shift? Jian Xing had been under the impression he was a part-time student working here, but turns out he was the owner. She uttered an O and refocused on her problem. After a while, Zhang Bishan suddenly asked, You can't solve it. Jian Xing brushed him off with a flip response. To her surprise, Zhang Bishan said, What problem is it? Let me see. Jian Xing looked up at him. Zhang Bishan took another sip of water, puffed his cheeks, and motioned with his eyes for Jian Xing to turn the paper around. Jian Xing did not react. Swallowing his water and looking at her, Zhang Bishan asked, What's your issue? Jian Xing hesitated, then finally admitted, It's physics. Zhang Bishan stated, Physics is physics. Turn it around, will you? She turned the paper around. Zhang Bishan glanced at it and casually mentioned the key concept the problem was testing. Jian Xing couldn't contain her surprise. Zhang Bishan gave a knowing chuckle, reclined in his chair, folded his arms and lifted his chin in a proud manner. Impressive, right? Now Jian Xing was starting to become curious about Zhang Bishan. She asked, Are you a university student? With a non-committal grunt from him, his eyes went back to the problem clearly not wishing to discuss further. Jian Xing sensed this and didn't continue her line of inquiry. However, Zhang Bishan looked up again almost immediately. Why did you stop asking? Jian Xing was taken aback and hesitated for a moment. Understanding her dilemma, Zhang Bishan issued a scoff, quite considerate of you. Jian Xing pursed her lips. I haven't graduated yet. Currently on a study break, Zhang Bishan added without waiting for a comment from her, but I could easily solve elementary problems like these. Jian Xing didn't quite know how to respond. Fortunately, Zhang Bishan decided against further rambling and started explaining the problem. Zhang Bishan's scientific thinking was much simpler and direct compared to Jian Xing's. 
The problem that she had classified as a difficult a grade was broken down into a simple foundational question by him. After finishing his explanation, he looked extremely tired, stood up, yawned and stated, I'm going to grab something to eat. Watch the shop for me. This time, Jian Xing replied with a sure. At her reply, he glanced at her but made no comment. Instead, he just chuckled and walked out. Jian Xing finished her test and Zhang Bishan was not back yet, so she got up and found a book to read. Then she pulled out her phone to chat with Chen Yanbei. After only a few exchanges, she opened her social platform and found that Zhu Zhenqing had updated a photo. Jian Xing had been connected with Zhu Zhenqing for almost a year and had never seen Zhu Zhenqing post any photos. She opened it out of curiosity and found it was a photo of the seaside. The sky was blue, the clouds were white, and the sea was vast and seemingly stretched to another world. She stared at it for a long time and quietly saved the photo in her album. She had never seen the sea before. Every place he went felt like a distant destination to her. He too. Before long, comments began to appear under Zhu Zhenqing's post. Some people addressed him as class president, some as handsome guy, and some just called him bro. Zhu Zhenqing only responded to one of them. The person had an English nickname, Rabbit. Her comment was, Take a look. I am about to cry. Jian Xing didn't know why a seemingly cheerful comment was followed by a crying emoji, but Zhu Zhenqing seemed to understand. Because his reply was, Pat little pig. Shivering Rabbit replied again, You're the pig. Big stupid pig. Ha 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 ha. Zhu Zhenqing replied, Okay, okay, you are a rabbit. This time, Rabbit only responded with a single emoji, jumping. This brief exchange was buried in countless comments, but it caught Jian Xing's eye. She couldn't look away and didn't dare to click into this person's account. She just gazed at it unblinkingly for a long time. The bookstore was air-conditioned, but Jian Xing suddenly felt tension in her chest like she was gasping for breath. Her breathing became obvious, until the glass door was pushed open and she abruptly hid her phone under the table as if hiding something. The loud sound attracted Zhang Bishan's attention. He glanced at Jian Xing, then at the phone on the table. Jian Xing was looking down, her expression unreadable. He joked, quite western style, eh? He even got a cell phone. Jian Xing's ears rang for a moment. She stared blankly at the book in front of her, every word starting to blur, gradually morphing into the exchange on her phone. Suddenly, her phone vibrated. Her thoughts were abruptly pulled back. She opened her eyes, gasping for breath like a fish struggling for life on the shore. Her movement was noticeable. Zhang Bishan noticed and furrowed his brows. Before Jian Xing could calm her nerves, her phone rang. It was a call from Chen Yanbei. As she picked up, she subconsciously stood up. She also didn't understand why she would stand up. It seemed like a habitual action that came with answering the phone. However, this unconscious action caused her to lose her balance. Her vision went black for a moment. She felt a weakness in her legs, and she slumped back into her chair. The phone clattered onto the table, emitting a loud noise. Chen Yanbei's anxious voice came from inside Jian Xing. Jian Xing. Jian Xing closed her eyes resting her arm on the table, tightly griping the test paper she had just finished. In the end, the one who answered the phone was Zhang Bishan. He told Chen Yanbei in a hurry, she's not feeling well, she'll call you back later. After hanging up, Zhang Bishan went to Jian Xing's side and took it upon himself to take her wrist. He was checking her pulse. At this time, Jian Xing's ability to open her eyes was restored. Her vision returned to normal. She stared at Zhang Bishan in confusion, feeling like she was in a movie. Zhang Bishan's face, which had just eaten, was looking better, but his expression was serious. He asked in a serious tone, how long it has been since you've had a good sleep? Jian Xing pursed her lips and did not answer. Zhang Bishan released her wrist, seemingly without any intention of pressuring her into answering, looking as though he didn't care whether she answered or not. Jian Xing doesn't really have a strong desire to express herself. She prefers to bottle everything up within herself. It's as if the more she hides, the more it belongs to her. This makes her feel like she is richer in experiences, despite always considering herself quite withered. However, Zhang Bishan possesses some kind of magical power. He is lazy, casual, never overstepping, never probing. He seems to live life with ease. This makes people subconsciously want to share things with him. Most importantly, he knows Zhu Zhenqing, and there are traces of Zhu Zhenqing in his world. 
So she wonders if she can enter Zhu Zheng King's world, maybe she can experience it through Zhang Bishan's. Jian Xing loses her grip on the examination paper and begins to speak. It's been a while. Zhang Bishan doesn't act like an elder, nor does he take on the demeanor of a doctor. He merely says jokingly, impressive. It must be the energy of youth. Jian Xing forces a smile. But youth isn't a shield, Zhang Bishan finally speaks with a hint of solemnity, he says, the younger you are, the more harshly you may be affected. Jian Xing drops her gaze, not looking at Zhang Bishan, merely speaking, as if to no one in particular. She says, it's not that I don't want to sleep. High school students normally have stress, Zhang Bishan agrees with her. Jian Xing gently shakes her head, I don't have any stress. Zhang Bishan responds, well, it's normal for teenagers to have stress. Jian Xing looks up. When Jian Xing first started to speak, her voice was very quiet. Zhang Bishan thought she would cry, but when she looked up, her eyes were clear. There was no sign that she was about to cry. She asks, have you ever felt it? Zhang Bishan shakes his head, leaning back leisurely, an arm resting on the table, toying with a bottle of mineral water. Probably, I was the one giving others stress, he says. Jian Xing doesn't voice a response. They fall silent again. Jian Xing shifts her gaze to the door. A few bags of cat food are placed in the corner of the entrance, the same brand as last year. After a long while, she quietly asks, When did you notice? Zhang Bishan stops toying with the water bottle. He glances at Jian Xing, but she doesn't look back at him. After a moment, she answers her own question, Was it the first time I borrowed a book? He's recovered by now, he says, You're pretty sharp. Jian Xing says, You were too obvious. Zhang Bishan chuckles, well, you're only just realizing it now, aren't you? Jian Xing responds with a simple hum for agreement, I was nervous. She said that, withdrawing her gaze and lowers her head. Zhang Bishan looks at her for a long while before speaking, you're still young, you might not understand fully. What? Jian Xing asks, looking up. Zhang Bishan locks eyes with her, it takes him a while before he laughs and shifts his gaze back to the mineral water bottle in his hand. The only honorable way to respond to love is to maintain your love for yourself while you're in love with someone else, he says. It was only after she was on her way home that Jian Xing returned Chen Yanbei's call. Chen Yanbei was frightened to death, kept saying, I was just about to call the police, you know. Jian Xing explains, I felt a bit dizzy earlier, couldn't hold my phone. Why are you feeling dizzy? Chen Yanbei asks, did you not sleep well? Jian Xing takes a while before responding, yeah. Chen Yanbei sighs. Why don't we get you some sleeping pills? Jian Xing laughs a little. How could pharmacies just sell this stuff to you? Chen Yanbei snaps, and you're still laughing? Jian Xing says, I know what to do, don't worry. I'll worry yourself, Chen Yanbei curses, you know nothing. Jian Xing just listens to Chen Yanbei rant and waits until she's nearly home before hanging up. For the next few days, it rained unexpectedly. Jian Xing continued to visit the bookstore during the day. But because Jian Ru and Lu Cheng didn't set up their stalls, Jian Xing had to return home on time. Her relationship with Zhang Bai Shen deepened significantly due to a frank discussion, and since Jian Ru and Lu Cheng spent almost all their time at home during that period, Jian Xing left her phone with Zhang Bai Shen. When the weather finally cleared up, Jian Ru and Lu Cheng left early in the morning and didn't plan to return until the afternoon. Jian Xing, feeling relieved, went to lunch with Chen Yan Bai. He showed a lot of concern about her sleep issue and asked, How have you been lately? Jian Xing replied, Just so-so, which suggested that things weren't good. Watching the dark circles under Jian Xing's eyes gradually becoming more apparent, Chen Yanbai said, This can't continue. Let's go to the hospital sometime, Jian Xing replied, No need, when Chen Yanbai insisted, saying, You shouldn't ignore this. You're about to start your second year of high school, and the progress will be fast. Jian Xing still refused. She didn't tell Chen Yan Bai that she knew what the problem was. In the afternoon, she went back to the bookstore, where Zhang Bai Shen, who wasn't taking his usual nap, was lying on the desk playing a game. Upon seeing Jian Xing, he immediately asked, Did you get me food? She placed the takeout on the counter and headed to her desk. Zhang Bai Shen, without even looking up at her, muttered, You don't respect me at all, but Jian Xing ignored him. After the rain stopped, the weather became hot again, and the air conditioning in the bookstore was turned on once more. Jian Xing worked on an English exam paper, but she seemed rather distracted. After finishing the closed test, she pushed the exam paper aside and started playing with her phone. There weren't many people on her QQ friend list, 
so it didn't take long for her to scroll back to updates from a few days ago. Jian Xing stared at the same picture for a long time, gathering courage before clicking on Rabbit's space. Her space was set as private, inaccessible to non-friends. However, Jian Xing saw her avatar a pink rabbit. Jian Xing froze for a while before exiting the space. She thought about that winter, building a castle in the cold, the thin glass window, and the outline she sketched before it shattered, they were all memories, nothing new. Jian Xing put her phone down. A cat appeared at the door, probably to enjoy the air conditioning. Noticing Zhang Bai Shen was busy eating, she went to open the door. Zhang Bai Shen glanced at her and said absent-mindedly, such a clear day. While Jian Xing stood at the door looking outside, she thought, yes, it's a clear day, but the rain in my heart is so heavy, 